So we were just finishing up the Darkest Dungeon video. We were recording the intro and all of a sudden it, like as we were getting done and as I was about to finish up, I got a notification that my Christmas gift to my little brother isn't gonna get here on time. So there's gonna be no Christmas, no Christmas at all. And we can't have that. So um, because we're dumb masochists, uh, he really, really liked the build videos that we've been doing lately. So we're gonna try and build something for him in 10 days. So here's what we're thinking for the build, right? We're gonna do uh, the elite symbol from Halo for the legendary sign where it's the elite skull with the two swords crossed behind it uh, with the shield in the background. And we're gonna kind of make this as large as we can, make it a wall mounted piece. But ideally, I do wanna add some LEDs to the eyes to make it look really kind of creepy, make it look a little you know, ominous like it is in the game. And then we'll probably try to add some speakers from behind to add some sounds, put in some voice lines, maybe some of the halo grunts. Because we didn't get to do much today, all I could do was really plan it out and order the pieces. So we did end up planning to build the skull out of 3D print and the swords out of several different 3D printed materials. Um, the back plate we are gonna do out of wood. I also ordered all the electronic components. I have an Arduino Uno that we're gonna use. All right. Let's get to it. Hey guys, it's day one. And so today we're gonna to be mainly working on printing, uh, on the digital side of printing. We're gonna get all that set up for today. We do wanna get all the files sliced and done. We don't have any of the white filament yet, so we cannot print the skull, but the skull is actually gonna be the deciding factor in terms of size, because I wanna print the skull in one entire piece. The swords we can print in multiple pieces. Uh, we're going to put that all in black though, we're not going to change colors, we're just going to slice it probably at the hilt and at the blade, and hopefully that'll be enough that we can then print it as one or two whole pieces with those. After that, we are going to start printing the swords actually, so we're going to slice both today and print the swords. So, let's get started. First thing, let's take the mandibles off and see how large the skull can get and still fit on the build plate. Angling it diagonally will let us maximize the size, but it will cost more filament to print. Looks like about 425% is the maximum size that we can get it at. Now let's get the sword sliced as well. We're going to set it to 425% to match the skull. And now let's cut it into multiple parts to get it to fit on the board. With this done, and since we're waiting for the other parts to get in, it'll be a couple days before we can do anything else. Our enemies are not going to kill themselves, you know. So it's day four, it's the morning, it's Saturday morning, and all of this came in late last night, so I didn't actually get a chance to mess with it like I was hoping for on Friday. So let's take a look at what we got here. We have the SD card boards that I was worried weren't going to get in on time. So these were only, I just ordered these on Thursday and they did technically come on Friday, but they might have actually delayed the entire order because they didn't show up till about 11 at night last night. Let's see, we have the speakers, the little tiny speakers. We're going to see how well those work. The white filament. And then the LEDs. The brutes are jerks! So it's day five, and the first thing we needed to do was go and pick out some wood for the shield. Next, we're gonna project the shield onto the wood and trace its outline in Sharpie. Now let's go ahead and cut the shield out of the wood. You're probably going to want to sand the edges down before you paint it.
Let's go check on the 3D prints. And as you can see, it's going pretty well. Um, it's a big print. I had to fit it on the bed as best as I could. So it's right up against the edge right there. And it still looks like it has about 13 hours left, just over 13 hours. So it's gonna be a long print because we left it printing yesterday. All day we were gone and printing overnight. So it's been printing for about 20, about 30 hours at this point. That hurt my feelings. Oh my God, I have feelings. I'm a real boy. All right, now that we have the wood cut out, let's get to painting it. First, let's put on the base layer. Next, we're going to tape over the edges to make sure that the lines stay clean, and let's paint the inside area black. After it's dry, let's go ahead and pull the tape off. All right, and the print of the skull finished up as well, and it's looking really good. Let's go ahead and get to work getting rid of all these supports. Looks perfect. Green, good camouflage. Shiny green, not so much. I Today we're gonna focus on the electronics and the coating. Instead of showing you the actual Arduino, which can be a little hard to understand because my wiring isn't the best, here's the wiring diagram for the SD card, showing you where all these pins connect. I will have the speaker running from pin 10 and the LEDs running from pin three if you look at any Arduino, there are several pins with a tilde symbol, which is important because it means that those pins are PWM pins, meaning that they can be modulated at a rate of 490 hertz. That means I can dim and brighten the LED on pin number three from code. So let's start working on software. First thing I need to do is load all the voice lines onto a micro SD card. First, let's grab a YouTube video with all the sounds we want and download it. Great, next we're going to go ahead and open this up in an audio software like Audacity. Now I'm going to grab the bits with the specific sounds that I want. Once we have all the sound effects, we have to put them in a format that the Arduino can understand. Fortunately, there are several online converters that will do this for you, and I'll link to this one down below. For an Arduino Uno, the settings need to be 8-bit resolution, 16,000 hertz, mono channel, and the PCM format needs to be unsigned 8-bit. Now that I have an Arduino wired up like I showed you earlier, and an SD card with all the clips I want saved on board, let's get to coding. First, let's initialize the pins we need and set up the variables for later. Also, you need to set up the TMRPCM, which is the Arduino sound library. If you want to learn more about it, I'll link to the GitHub repository below. Otherwise, you can just copy this code. Now let's move on to the main loop. There are two things that we want it to do. One, we want it to play audio about every 30 seconds. And two, we want it to cause the eyes to fade. First, we're going to go ahead and grab a random number between one and eight. Then, if it's been through the loop enough times, let's have it play the audio clip associated with that number. Next, let's calculate the brightness. LEDs have a brightness range from 0 to 255, so if it reaches either the maximum or the minimum value, let's have it reverse the direction that it's going in. Let's set a 50 millisecond delay, meaning that this loop will run about 20 times per second. 
It will change the brightness every single cycle and play an audio file every 2400 cycles. Now let's clean up the code and fix a few mistakes I made. Perfect, and now that it's running, let's take a look. Here's an LED test. And now, here's the speaker test. Oh, I see. You're a moron. On day eight, we're going to superglue the swords together. The first time we tried this, it didn't actually take. So we got some high grit sandpaper to use on the gluing area to help increase the total surface area for the glue to set in. You go, you die! Alright, let's go ahead and finally start to assemble the project. The first thing we need to do is remove the supports from the mandibles. Great, now we're going to attach them. Drill a pilot hole in each of the mandibles. Then we're going to screw in the larger mandible to the smaller one, and then screw them both into the skull. I also designed and printed a couple of stands to help screw in the skull where it doesn't actually touch the shield. Now that the glue is dried, let's go ahead and paint the swords. Don't run into them, it's got germs! It's Christmas Eve, and we have to finish this project today, so it's time to buckle in. Let's go ahead and get the swords attached to the back plate. It will be behind the skull most of the time, so we can just screw them in from behind. Even though the glue fails, it can still be held in here by a screw. Moving on to the soldering. Since we're low on time, the LEDs are actually going to run behind the skull instead of drilling through it. I'm running them in series, so I'm going to attach one negative lead to the other's positive lead. This wire will run behind the skull. Now I need to solder the current and the ground to the start and the end of the circuit. With this done, it's time for us to work on the electronics. We didn't get any video footage of it, but while I was soldering, Caitlin drilled a hole through the center of the board for our wires to run, and she attached a 2x2 to the top and bottom to extrude it out from the wall, giving us space for the electronics. Alright, now let's get the SD card reader on the back. I'm going to use some finishing nails and gently tap the SD card reader onto the shield. For the Arduino, I didn't have a ton of stuff on hand, and being Christmas Eve, I had to use what I had around. But these screw eyes should do just fine. Next, let's run the wires from the speaker through the hole Caitlin drilled, and attach the speaker with the same finishing nails we used before.
Using the two supports I printed, and some half-inch screws, let's get the skull on the shield. It was kind of hard to film it, but I just screwed it in from the side. Alright, we're almost out of time, but let's go ahead and glue the LEDs in place with some hot glue and pull the cables tight. Last thing for the night is to paint the cables white to make sure that they don't stick out too much. And we're done! You killed Poon Flip! The flippiest Poon I ever do! <laughs> Christmas morning is here, and he loved his gift. It finished off looking awesome, and all the electronics worked perfectly. I'm really proud of this build coming out, and the only thing I wish I could have done better was maybe drill some eye holes for the LEDs and do a better job of wiring on the back. But overall, I'm really happy with it. Let me know what game or show you want me to make something from next. I'm some bad engineer, and I'll see you next time.